lesson continuing in the chapter of gross income, we're going to learn how to fill out a weekly time card. So your employer might expect you to keep a weekly time card, which means that every time you go to work, you sign in and you sign out. Sometimes it is digital. Sometimes you will do it by hand. So we're going to walk through the weekly time card, which simply is a daily record of the time you report to work and the time you depart, including any lunch hours that you might have to spend in the middle of your day or any breaks. So I hope you had time to download the employee time card so you'd have that in front of you while we're doing some calculations. So this might be a typical Monday through Friday time card. Now that you can see that it is all digital, we clocked in, we clocked out, in and out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure all of this information is accurate and we're going to do our calculations by hand. Now it's going to be important that you probably have a calculator handy to make some of the fractional and decimal minutes um, be a little bit easier to calculate. So the first thing you want to do when you're turning this in at the end of the week is you want to supply your name. So whatever your name is, you're going to fill that out here and you work as maybe a cashier in a store. So you want to put what department and your name. When you're all done at the end, you want to add your signature to your time card and then we're going to calculate the total hours worked. All right, now when I do this, I'm going to use my fingers a lot and I'm going to use elapsed time. So I'm going to say, let's start with this Monday's date, which was the 7th. So I'm going to say December 7th was Monday, Tuesday was the 8th, Wednesday was the 9th, Thursday the 10th, and Friday the 11th. Now I'm going to do some calculations over here and some calculations over here to total everything up. So I'm going to start with my in and out for Monday. My in and out, you can see that I probably took an hour break or Joe took an hour break. So when I count from 815, I'm going to go to the first whole hour before noon. So I'm going to count to 915, 1015, 1115 gives me three hours. And to calculate from 15 to the next hour, I know that's going to calculate 45 minutes. So I'm going to make that a fraction out of 60 since there's 60 minutes in an hour. So my first total is going to be either 3 and 45 minutes out of 60, or if you want to write that as a decimal, that would be 0.75. So it's 3.75 hours for the morning shift on Monday. Then I'm going to do the same thing for my afternoon shift. So we're going to go from 1 to 5 and know that's going to total 4 hours. So when I add those two together, my total hours for Monday and you can either do it as a fraction, are going to be seven hours and 45 minutes, or that reduces to 7.75 hours. Now I'm gonna continue this process for Tuesday. Like I said, I count the elapsed time. So I go from 8.30 to the next hour before 12.05. So I'll count 8.30, 9.30, 10.30, 11.30 gives me three hours, and then I'll have 35 minutes to get to 12.05. So that's going to give me three and 35 over 60 since there's 60 minutes in an hour. Then I'm going to calculate my afternoon hours. So I'm going to count from 12.45. I'm going to count 1.45 is one hour, 2.45 is two hours, 3.45 is three hours, and 445 is four hours, and then I'm going to go from 45, takes me 15 minutes to get to 5 o'clock, and another 10 minutes to get to 510. So that's going to give me a total of 25 out of 60 minutes. That's going to now need it added to my morning hours. So if I take 3 and 35 sixtieths, and I add 4 and 25 sixtieths, that actually gives me exactly eight hours. 
So those are my hours for Tuesday. Now Wednesday, again, I'm gonna do my morning shift first. 8.25 to 9 to 10 to 11.25 is three hours, and then I'm gonna count from 25 after until 10 after, which is gonna give me 35, 45 minutes out of 60. And then I'm gonna do my afternoon hours. So my afternoon hours goes from 12.50 to 150, to 250, to 350, to 450 gives me four hours. And then from 450 to 519 is going to give me 29 minutes out of 60. So now I have three hours and 45 sixtieths plus four hours and 29 sixtieths. When I add those two together, that gives me eight and seven thirtieths, or that's about 8.23 hours. All right, continuing on my week for Thursday, that's gonna have an elapsed time of 8.10 to 9.10 to 10.10 to 11.10 to 12.10 gives me four hours and then I've got to get from 12.10 all the way to 105 again. That's going to give me 55 minutes out of 60. Then my afternoon hours are nice and easy, three hours. So when I add those two together, that gives me seven hours and 55 out of 60, or that reduces to 11 twelfths. If I do it as a decimal, that's about 7.92 hours. One last day, Friday, I'm going to count from 8.23 to 12.20. So that's going to take me to 9.23, 10.23, 11.23, and I can't go to 12, so that's three hours. And I'm just three minutes shy of another hour. So that's gonna give me about 57 out of 60 minutes for my morning shift. My afternoon shift is gonna be from one to 4.30 is nice and simple. That's gonna be three and a half hours. When I add those two together, that's gonna to give me approximately 7.4 hours. All right, now I'm gonna use my calculator and I'm gonna total all of these together, 7.75, 8, 8.23, 7, 8, 8.92, and 7.45. So for the total hours in the week, Joe worked 39.35 hours. All right, now let's figure out Joe's pay. If he works 39.35 hours and he gets paid $8 an hour for the first 30 hours, then double time after that, how much will you get paid for the week? So let's do, so we're gonna do gross pay. We're gonna do the straight time pay first, which is $30 hours at $8 an hour. That's the straight time pay. Then we're gonna add that to the overtime. So the overtime rate is double time. So we're gonna take eight times two for the double time. And the difference between 30 and 39.35 is 9.35 hours. So real quick calculation there, 30 times eight gives me 240 plus 16 times 9.35 and 16 times 9.35 is $149.60. And that's gonna give me a gross pay, or give Joe a gross pay for the week of $389.60. So we had to go back and calculate how many hours did Joe work each day, add all those hours together, calculate his straight time pay, calculate his overtime pay, and add those together to get his gross pay. That completes this lesson. Go ahead and look for your assignment on Google Classroom.